So ever since I released the fourth episode of my Stranglethorn Vice series, there have been a number of developments. Developments, surprisingly, from Blizzard themselves. It seems that my videos have successfully snowballed the topic of gold selling and GDKPs in the community. Thank you, by the way, to everyone who has posted my videos on the WoW forums. One of the posts actually did blow up to about 300 posts, and this really is a kick in the teeth for Blizzard because it truly is an embarrassment for them that one of their most trending topics on their forums is gold selling. We as a community have successfully encouraged Blizzard to change. And I'm not just talking about the policy on GDKPs, there's a number of different things happening in the background that we will cover in this video, which are quite interesting. Before we jump in guys, if you want early previews of my videos, I'm now posting a lot of that kind of content on my Instagram, so please give me a follow. I don't think people fully realise just how good remote PC software has revolutionised in the past few years. Why am I mentioning this? Well, imagine if you could level your WoW characters and farm gold while sitting at a bus stop or waiting for the girlfriend that you don't have to put her makeup on. Well, these days you can so easily with the app or Sun Remote. It very easily connects to your PC. You can turn your PC on remotely also with your phone with the smart plug they provide. And then you can use the specially made World of Warcraft keyboard to control your character. I've been doing this while I've been on holiday, literally sat on a sun lounger, fishing up lock boxes on my hardcore character for gold. As you can see, it's very easy to get the World of Warcraft keyboard set up and it's totally customizable. I was able to easily control my character and press all of my keybinds while leveling up my hardcore character. There's a free trial where you can fully test the app's features and if you end up liking the app, you can get the game version. It works both on Android and iOS and you can find all the information in the description down below about getting that free 7 day trial. So the GDKP is now a bannable offence. Blizzard have actually sent out a number of very threatening emails to people who have already participated in GDKPs to prove to players Yes, we are capable of tracking whether you have been in a GDKP and you will get banned. Now, fortunately, there is already a GDKP workaround in the making that involves pre-bidding on a separate entity like Discord and then the trading of enchanting materials instead of gold or actually real money. We will do a full investigation into this in a follow-up video. But this isn't the only change Blizzard have implemented. As I mentioned in my latest STV video, gold farmers very often purchase game time with Argentinian debit cards to reduce the cost of the sub fee. This is because Argentina is experiencing a pretty severe financial crisis of inflation and Blizzard have a policy to make WoW affordable around the world by reducing the sub fee. Now I exposed this in my previous video and now Blizzard have actually totally removed this policy. Previously you could essentially buy game time in Argentinian currency for half the price but now it looks like people who live in Argentina experiencing those financial difficulties will actually have to pay triple the usual sub fee. So with this policy in mind, how difficult now is it for gold sellers to make a profit? Well, instead of paying $7, they will now pay $15 to set up an account, although there's probably workarounds with that anyway. But anyway, they do make $40 per account per day. So this really isn't a huge deterrent, but it is a slight deterrent. And the important thing to consider is when you have a number of small deterrents acting together, stacked up together, this does create a larger difficulty for the gold sellers. But what else are Blizzard doing? Well, they tease they're developing new tech, apparently, to tackle gold sellers. How true is that? Well, I have heard multiple reports that they're implementing an idea that actually came up from an early Stranger Form Vice episode, and that is human verification. So Blizzard have actually added human verification captures on the login screen when you are trying to log in to WoW on multiple clients on the same PC. This again is a small deterrent because it means Gorslers will now have to manually type in that capture from time to time on their account, which will slow down their gold per hour. If you found the video interesting so far guys, please do subscribe to the channel. These videos take ages to make, particularly when it comes to the research or would really appreciate it. Blizzard are also getting better at doing hardware bans. This is where they directly banned your PC's ID, so that you can't just make a new account on the same PC. As we know, most gothlers do use virtual machines to subvert this ban, but nonetheless this introduces another layer of difficulty. But unfortunately, we still are quite far away from the ideal situation. The World of Warcraft anti-cheat software is nowhere near good enough 
in the fight against fly hackers. I mean, we've even got to the point where fly hackers are so popular and prevalent that streamers like Shobek are shamelessly getting boosted by fly hackers while live on Twitch. Holy sh! The angel started. Well, the fucking wings sprouted, baby. Hell yeah, the wings sprouted. I mean, if fly hackers are confident enough to show themselves fly hacking on a live stream, it's painfully obvious that we have a serious problem. Recently, Microsoft sacked nearly 2,000 staff employees from Activision Blizzard, and according to an interview of Aftermath, who interviewed former employees, almost all of those staff members were game masters, all within the field of customer support. Now, we interviewed a former GM, who more or less confirmed that WoW GMs don't have an active role in detecting bots on live servers. The truth is they really are just an hourly ticket machine who barely ever logs into the game. You see, Blizzard's approach is to focus on analyzing data to detect gold farmers rather than a hands-on approach. My theory is that they are investing into more automated systems and tech to find bots rather than employing a human to do this job. What seems to already be happening in the gold farming world is that people are obviously doing their farms in instances and they are getting teleported underwater to obviously go and die of like fatigue or something. So it won't surprise me if they're basically going to introduce a system where if people are farming too much in instances or it's a bit dodgy, you know, they're displaying suspicious data, they will automatically get teleported to somewhere where they are going to die, which would be a very good thing. But to be honest, this is a real problem in the 21st century in general. So many jobs are being replaced by software and AI, etc. You know, why pay multiple people 30 grand a year when you can pay one person to design some software that does their job instead for around about, you know, 10,000 pounds. In my humble opinion, humans should be working alongside these automated systems that acquire suspicious player data. There should be a combination of dedicated in-game GMs, finding bots, and using data analysis to find them. Even if we had one GM per server skulking the known gold farming spots like how it was SFK in Phase 1 or Black Temple in Wrath Classic, it would be an improvement. The problem is, you have to pay that GM in a ballpark of 30 grand per year, and you still have piles and piles of customer tickets to deal with. Every game company obviously has a budget, and expenditure in the anti-cheat field really doesn't directly lead to a bonus in profits. And this is why main developers, they just don't spend a great amount of resources in this field across the board, let's be honest, because I'd rather spend it in a field that drives up revenue, like obviously paying a developer to make some new content for the game. Now, I think there's a big but to that statement. You see, if more and more irritating people like me continuously publicize the issue of RMT in World of Warcraft, then the company will see a revenue drop as a consequence, and therefore they'll have to spend more resources into investing into anti-cheats stuff to essentially like damage control the loss of players paying that subscription fee. Which is why it is important for videos like this or videos from different creators to be publicized as much as possible you know, by you guys sharing it with as many people as you can, you know, putting it in your guild, discord, whatever, or getting your favorite streamer to react to it by posting it on their Reddit page. But anyway, guys, until my next video, ciao.